hello and welcome today to today's oil for the journey reading i am your reader journey reader denise joiner and today's reading is brought to you by ignite the truth bridges for peace bible reading plan i'll be reading from the new international translation of the bible and reading the text exodus chapters 30 through 33 and as customary, I will read the subtitles. Here we go. Exodus 30. The Altar of Incense. Make an altar of asaya wood for burning incense. It is to be square, a cubit long, and a cubit wide, and two cubits high. Its horns of one piece with it. Overlay the top and all the sides and the horns with pure gold and make a gold molding around it. Make two gold rings for the altar below the molding, two on each of the opposite sides to hold the poles used to carry it. Make the poles of asaya wood and overlay them with gold. Put the altar in front of the curtain that shields the ark of the covenant law before the atonement cover that is over the tablets of the covenant law where i will meet you aaron must burn fragrant incense on the altar every morning when he tends to the lamps he must burn incense again when he lights the lamps at twilight so incense will burn regularly before the lord for the generations to come do not offer on this altar any other incense or any burnt offering or grain offering and do not pour a drink offering on it. Once a year, Aaron shall make atonement on its horns. This annual atonement must be made with the blood of the atoning sin offering for the generations to come. It must be holy to the Lord. Atonement money. Then the Lord said to Moses, when you take a census of the Israelites to count them, each one must pay the Lord a ransom for his life at the time he is counted. Then no plague will come on them when you number them. Each one who crosses over to those already counted is to give a half shekel according to the sanctuary shekel, which weighs 20 jiras. This half shekel is an offering to the Lord. All who cross over those 20 years old or more are to give an offering to the Lord. The rich are not to give more than a half, a half shekel and the poor are not to give less when you make the offering to the Lord to atone for your lives. Receive the atonement money from the Israelites and use it for the service of the tent of the meeting. It will be a memorial for the Israelites before the Lord, make an atonement for your lives. Basin washing, verse 17. Then the Lord said to Moses, make a bronze basin with its bronze stand for washing. Place it between the tent of the meeting and the altar and put water in it. Aaron and his sons are to wash their hands and feet with water from it. Whenever they enter the tent of meeting, they shall wash with water so that they will not die. Also, when they ap approach the altar to minister by presenting a food offering to the Lord, they shall wash their hands and feet so that they will not die. This is to be a lasting ordinance for Aaron and his descendants for the generations to come. Anointing oil, verse 22. Then the Lord said to Moses, take the following fine spices, 500 shekels of liquid myrrh, half as much, that is 250 shekels of fragrant cinnamon, 250 shekels of fragrant calamus, 500 shekels of cassia, all according to the sanctuary shekel and a hen of olive oil. Make these into a sacred anointing oil, a fragrant blend, the work of a perfumer. It will be the sacred anointing oil. 
and then use it to anoint the tent of meeting, the Ark of the Covenant Law, the table and all its articles, the lampstand and its accessories, the altar of incense, the altar of burnt offering, and all its utensils, and the basin with its stand. You shall consecrate them so they will be most holy, and whatever touches them will be holy. Anoint Aaron and his sons and consecrate them so that they may serve me as priests. Say to the Israelites, this is to be my sacred anointing oil for the generations to come. Do not pour it on anyone else's body and do not make any other oil using the same formula. It is sacred and you are to consider it sacred. Whoever makes perfume like it and puts it on anyone other than a priest must be cut off from their people. Incense, verse 34. Then the Lord said to Moses, take fragrant spices and uh, gum resin, uncha, galbanum, and pure frankincense, all in equal amounts, and make a fragrant blend of incense, the work of a perfumer. It is to be salted and pure and sacred. Grind some of it in powder and place it in front of the ark of the covenant law in the tent of meeting where I will meet you. It shall be most holy to you. Do not make any incense with this formula for yourselves. Consider it holy to the Lord. Whoever makes incense like it to enjoy its fragrance must be cut off from their people. Exodus chapter 31. Bezalel and Oholiab. Oholiab, I should say. Then the Lord said to Moses, See, I have chosen Bezalel, son of Uri, and son of Hur, of the tribe of Judah. And I have filled him with the Spirit of God, with wisdom, with understanding, with knowledge, and with all kinds of skills to make artistic designs for gold, silver, and bronze, to cut and set stones, to work in wood, and to engage in all kinds of crafts. Moreover, I have appointed Oholiab, son of Ahisamet, of the tribe of Dan, to help him. Also, I have given ability to all the skilled workers to make everything I have commanded you, the tent of meeting, the Ark of the Covenant Law, with the atonement cover on it and all the other furnishings of the tent, the table and its articles, the pure gold lampstand and all its accessories, the altar of incense, the altar of burnt offering and all its utensils, the basin with its stand and also the woven garments, both the sacred garments for Aaron the priest and the garments for his sons when they serve as priests and the atoning oil and fragrant incense for the holy place. They are to make them just as I commanded you. Verse 12 of chapter 31 in Exodus, the Sabbath. Then the Lord said to Moses, say to the Israelites, you must observe my Sabbaths. This will be a sign between me and you for the generations to come so you may know that I am the Lord who makes you holy. Observe the Sabbath because it is holy to you. Anyone who desecrates it is to be put to death. Those who do any work on that day must be cut off from their people. For six days work is to be done, but the seventh day is a day of Sabbath rest, holy to the Lord. Whoever does any work on the Sabbath day is to put, be put to death. The Israelites are to observe the Sabbath, celebrating it for the generations to come as a lasting covenant. It will be a sign between me and the Israelites forever. For in six days the Lord made the heavens and the earth, and on the seventh day he rested and was refreshed. When the Lord finished speaking to Moses on Mount Sinai, he gave him the two tablets of the covenant law, the tablets of stone inscribed by the finger of God. Chapter 33 of Exodus, The Golden Calf. When the people saw that Moses was so long in coming down from the mountain, they gathered Aaron, um, gathered around Aaron and said, Come, make us gods who will go before us. As for this fellow Moses who brought us up out of Egypt, we don't know what has happened to him. Aaron answered them, Take off the gold earrings that your wives, your sons, and your daughters were wearing and bring them to me. So all the people took off their earrings in the shape of a 
in earrings and brought them to Aaron. He took what they had handed him and made it into an idol cast in the shape of a calf, fashioning it with a tool. Then they said, these are your gods, Israel, who brought you up out of Egypt. When Aaron saw this, he built an altar in front of the calf and announced, tomorrow there will be a festival to the Lord. So the next day, the people rose early and sacrificed burnt offerings and presented fellowship offerings. Afterward, they sat down to eat, drink, and got up to indulge in reverie. Then the Lord said to Moses, go down because your people whom you brought up out of Egypt have become corrupt. They have been quick to turn away from what I commanded them and have made themselves an idol cast in the shape of a calf. They have bowed down to it and sacrificed to it and have said, these are your gods, Israel, who brought you out of Egypt. I have seen these people, the Lord said to Moses, and they are stiff necked people. Now leave me alone so that my anger may burn against them and that I may destroy them. Then I will make you into a great nation. But Moses sought the favor of the Lord, his God. Lord, he said, why should your anger burn against your people whom you brought out of Egypt with great power and a mighty hand? Why should the Egyptians say it was with evil intent that he brought them out to kill them in the mountains and to wipe them off the face of the earth? Turn from your fierce anger, relent, and do not bring disaster to your people. Remember your servants Abraham, Isaac, and Israel to whom you swore by your own self. I will make your descendants a num as numerous as the stars in the sky, and I will give your descendants all this land I promised them, and it will be their inheritance forever. Then the Lord relented and did not bring on his people the disaster he had threatened. Moses turned and went down the mountain with the two tablets of the covenant law in his hands. They were inscribed on both sides, front and back. The tablets were the work of God. The writing was the writing of God engraved on the tablets. When Joshua heard the noise of the people shouting, he said to Moses, there is the sound of war in the camp. Moses replied, it is not the sound of victory. It is not the sound of defeat. It is the sound of singing that I hear. When Moses approached the camp and saw the calf and the dancing, his anger burned and he threw the tablets out of his hands, breaking them into pieces at the foot of the mountain. And he took the calf the people had made and burned it in the fire. Then he ground it to powder, scattered it on the water and made the Israelites drink it. He said to Aaron, what did these people do to you? that you led them into such a great sin. Do not be angry, my Lord, Aaron answered. You know how prone these people are to evil. They said to me, make us gods who will go before us. And as for this fellow Moses who brought us here up out from Egypt, we don't know what has happened to him. So I told them, whoever has any gold, jewelry, take it off. Then they gave me the gold and I threw it into the fire and it came out this calf. Moses saw that the people were running wild and that Aaron had let them get out of control and so become a laughingstock to their enemies. So he stood at the entrance of the camp and said, whoever is for the Lord, come to me. And all the Levites rallied to him. And he said to them, this is what the Lord, the God of Israel says. Each man strap a sword on his side, go back and forth, through the camp from one end to the other, each killing his brother and friend and neighbor. The Levites did as Moses commanded, and that day about 3,000 of the people died. Then Moses said, You have been set apart to the Lord today, for you were against your own sons and brothers, and he has blessed you this day. The next day Moses said to the people, You have committed a great sin. But now I will go up to the Lord. Perhaps I can make atonement for your sin. So Moses went back up to the Lord and said, Oh, what a great sin these people have committed. They have made themselves gods of gold. But now please forgive their sin. But if not, then blot me out of the book you have written. The Lord replied to Moses, 
Whoever has sinned against me, I will blot out of my book. Now go, lead the people to the place I spoke of, and my angel will go before you. However, when the time comes for me to punish, I will punish them for their sin. And the Lord struck the people with a plague because of what they did with the calf Aaron had made. Exodus chapter 33. Then the Lord said to Moses, leave this place, you and the people who brought you up out of Egypt and go up to the land I promised an oath, the land I promised on oath to Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob saying, I will give it to your descendants. I will send an angel before you and drive out the Canaanites, Amorites, Hittites, Perizzites, Hevites, and Jebusites. Go up to the land flowing with milk and honey, but I will not go with you because you are stiff-necked people and I might destroy you on the way. When the people heard these distressing words, they began to mourn and no one put on any ornaments for the Lord had said to Moses, tell the Israelites you are stiff-necked people. If I were to go with you even for a moment, I might destroy you. Now take off your ornaments and I will decide what to do with you. So the Israelites stripped off their ornaments at Mount Horeb. Exodus 33, verse 7. The tent of meeting. Now Moses used to take a tent and pitch it outside the camp some distance away, calling it the tent of meeting. Anyone inquiring of the Lord will go to the tent of meeting outside the camp. And whenever Moses went out to the tent, all the people rose and stood at the entrances to their tents, watching Moses until he entered the tent. As Moses went into the tent, the pillar of cloud would come down and stay and at the entrance while the Lord spoke to Moses. Whenever the people saw the pillar of cloud as standing at the entrance of the tent, they all stood and worshiped each at the entrance of their tent. The Lord would speak to Moses face to face as one speaks to a friend. Then Moses would return to the camp, but his young aide Joshua, son of Nun, did not leave the tent. Moses and the glory of God. Chapter 33, verse 12. Moses said to the Lord, you have been telling me, lead these people, but you have not let me know whom you will send with me. You have said, I know you by name and, I, and you have found favor with me. If you are pleased with me, teach me your ways so I may know you and continue to find favor with you. Remember that this nation is your people. The Lord replied, my presence will go with you and I will give you rest. Then Moses said to him, if your presence does not go with us, do not send us up from here. How will anyone know that you are pleased with me and with your people unless you go with us? What else will distinguish me and your people from all the other people on the face of the earth? And the Lord said to Moses, I will do the very thing you have asked because I am pleased with you and I know you by name. Then Moses said, now show me your glory. And the Lord said, I will cause my goodness to pass in front of you and I will proclaim my name, the Lord, in your presence. I will have mercy on whom I will have mercy and I will have compassion on whom I will have compassion. But, he said, you cannot see my face for no one may see me and live. Then the Lord said, there is a place near me where you may stand on a rock. When my glory passes by, I will put you in the cleft in the rock and cover you with my hand until I've passed by. Then I will remove my hand and you will see my back, but my face must not be seen. Thank you for joining us today in today's Oil for the Journey reading of Exodus chapters 30, 31, 32, and 33. God bless you.